Look at Acts chapter 16. <clears throat> now you might be asking yourself, and, and I'm going to go as long as my voice will allow. You might be thinking to yourself, why are we back in the middle of Acts when we finished progress report number seven last week? Well, that's okay. That's a good question. We're going to do a kind of a wrapping it up, kind of give us a quick overview of what I think a lot of Acts deals with and how we need to be um, guiding or, or at least walking in our, in our walk of faith and how we need to be uh, uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide, lead, and direct us in all that we do. If you find your way to chapter 16. Um, we as human beings, and, and I really this is something real quick I want to look at. We as human beings like to do things our way. Amen? Well, you know, <laughs> my wife would say that a lot about myself. I like to do things my way. I don't want to say I'm over controlling, but I like to do things my way. Hey Amen. I, I kind of get in habit of doing things a certain way. For the most part, we believe that we know what's best for our lives. Most of the time, us as individuals, we believe that we know what's best for our lives, whether it's matters of finance, whether it's matters of education, whether it's matters of occupation. We tend to think <clears throat> that we know best, right? I tend to think sometimes that I know what's best for my life. Many of you tend to think that you know what's best for your life. When you wake up in the morning, you say, well, I want to do this or I want to do that. We have a tendency as human beings to think that we know what's best for our lives. Well, we as Christians are no different in many ways, right? We're supposed to be, but we're not. We're, we're, we're the same in many ways. We can find ourselves pressing forward doing what we believe we are supposed to be doing as Christians. The problem is that sometimes while we're trying to live in this nice, Christian, straight, and narrow line, the Holy Spirit will sometimes, out of the blue, tell us to take a left or a right. Okay? Listen, we as Baptists especially, we like habit. Right? We like things the way they've always been. We don't want much change. We as Christians like things to be in a nice, orderly fashion because if it gets too much over here or over there, we're not sure how we're going to react to that. And so we like our Christian walk, our Christian life, to be in a nice, pretty, straight line. Now, depending on your depth, of the walk, of your walk, and the level of our obedience, this will determine whether we are able to adapt and obey with what the Spirit is leading us to do. So as we see that we like things in an orderly fashion, we like things to be in a nice, pretty straight line, then all of a sudden, out of the blue, the Holy Spirit likes to tell us to take a left or a right, and we say, whoa! Whoa! Not ready for that. Wasn't planning on that today. Hadn't scheduled that in. Let me, uh, let me look at my planner. Spirit, you're going to have to wait a moment. I've got things going on. And so we as Christians find ourselves doing that many, many times. <clears throat> now, depending on your walk, the depth of your walk, and the level of your obedience is whether or not you'll find yourself with the ability to adapt and overcome. Now, when I think about those words adapt and overcome, it reminds me of the military. How many of you been in the military? Raise your hand. Okay. I know that uh, I think it's the Marines, but it might be all the military. Um, they have that saying, Adapt and overcome, right? Adapt and overcome. Meaning whatever situation comes your way, it might not look the same as it did yesterday. There might be some added add-ons or some additives 
to this particular situation that's being thrown at you. But your training prepares you to adapt to whatever the situation, no matter if it looks almost identical, but these little things have changed. Your training <clears throat> helps you to adapt and then overcome the problem. Military, police, anybody like this, because no two incidences are the same. Adapt and overcome. So as Christians, we like things to be nice and pretty and in a straight line. So what happens when the Holy Spirit throws us a curveball? What happens when the Holy Spirit shows up and says, take a left or take a right? Are you walking deep enough? Is your walk deep enough? Are you obeying enough to be able to adapt and obey and overcome the situation? Amen. So I want to look at that just for a few moments this morning. And something that we find with Paul in the book of Acts here, <clears throat> Paul found himself, found himself in this type of situation while on his second missionary journey. He knew the false teachers were trying to corrupt his church plants from the first journey. We saw that in progress report number five. We're right at the end of Paul's first journey. He goes to Jerusalem, to the Jerusalem council, and they say, hey, this type of teaching is going on in all the places that you just came from. They're preaching and teaching false doctrine to the places that you just taught Jesus Christ and him crucified. So Paul did not like this. Paul uh, really saw this as something that needed to be dealt with. And so what he did was in chapter 15, in verse 36, he goes to Barnabas. And he says, Barnabas, let's go back into every town that we just came out of and let's re-evangelize those places. Right? Nice, orderly, perfect fashion. Let's go back through every town in order to retrain all of those converts. Paul had it all figured out. He knew what he was doing. He was a Christian man, a God-fearing man, a Jesus freak, if you will, on fire for Christ, like many of you, right? So he was following the God's will. He was following Christ's will. He was following what he would feel like is the Holy Spirit in all that he does, like many of you, like I try to lead my life. So Paul says, you know what? God is sending me back. We're going to go back. We're going to re-evangelize all of those places. Nothing wrong with what Paul did. But the question is, it kind of seems like Paul had it all figured out, right? Until this. So look with me at chapter 16. We're going to look at verse 6, and if you would please stand. I would never go as far as to say that Paul thought that he had it figured out because I, I don't want to say what Paul was thinking at this time. But us, looking at Paul, we would believe that Paul, if anyone, would have had it figured out, right? I mean, Paul knew more than anybody. Paul was, was, was the one that Christ had chose to take the message to the Gentiles to bring forth the new covenant, right? We figured Paul would have known everything that he needed to know and do everything that he needed to do that was right in line with the Holy Spirit. And we feel like that Paul would have probably known what to do because we like to think that ourselves. I like to think that I know what God's will is in my life, right, for the most part. Sometimes, as I said, the Holy Spirit can throw us a curveball. So it seems that Paul <clears throat> had this all figured out. Looking at verse 6. The Word of God says this, and I'm reading out of the Hallman this morning. They went through the region of Phygia and Galatia. They had been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the Word in Asia. 
when they came to Mycia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. Passing by Mycia, they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision in which a Macedonian man was standing and pleading with him, cross over to Macedonia and help us. Some, uh, some scholars believe that that was Luke uh, because of verse 10 here says, after he had seen the vision, we, and that's the first time we see the pronoun in here, and speaking of, uh, we believe that that's Luke saying now he's on board again uh, here with Paul. So we immediately made efforts to set out for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. You hear that? Concluding, figuring that God had told them, that God had called them to preach the gospel there. Most of us would feel most of the time if we're Christians and we're walking in the word, we're on our knees, we're praying, we believe for the most part that we're doing God's will in our lives. We believe that we've got this thing pretty not figured out. We'd never say that. That will be a little arrogant. But we believe we're on the right track. Okay? But my question is, are you ready for the Holy Spirit to throw you a curveball? Verse 11 says, From Troas we put out to sea and sailed straight for Sumatra. The next day to Neapolis. And from there to Philippi, a Roman colony and a leading city in the district of Macedonia. We stayed in that city for several days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the city gate by the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and spoke to the women gathered there. Verse 14 says, A God-fearing woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, was listening. The Lord opened her heart to respond to what Paul was saying. After she and her house were baptized, she urged us, if you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay in my house. And then she persuaded us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come out here again this morning. Lord, I thank you so much for allowing us to give to these orphans in Kenya, halfway across the world. Lord God, that we'll never meet probably but yet you allow us to be part of what you're doing on the ground in Kenya what a mighty God we serve Father use us in a mighty way here this morning use this congregation to change the world for the kingdom of God use us to change our community. Use us to change our the people at our job, people at our school. Use us to change the people across the street. Introduce them to a new way of living. A living and a life guided by the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you'll look on the screen here shortly, I'm going to show you a map. And if you like to take notes, you can write this down. As I said, it seems that Paul had it all figured out until... The Holy Spirit showed up and wanted to change things. So first, for your first bullet point you can put down, the Holy Spirit will change your plans. Amen? How many of us understand that the Holy Spirit will change our plans? Say amen. amen. One of the things I was looking at when I was, when I was putting this together over the past couple days is what Paul must have been feeling. Go with me here as I, as I read this real quick. We're going to walk through this. They went through the region of Phygia and Galatia. And I've got a, I've got a cool little pen here I'm going to show you things with. Y'all are going to think, boy, the pastor's done got high tech on me. <clears throat> and I'll go to the other side. This big circle here is Phygia 
and Galatia. This is where Paul was spreading the word of God. This is where Paul uh, was, was going around and he was, he was planting churches. Uh, he had been there on his first missionary journey. We know that when he started his second journey, he went to Lystra, picked up Timothy, right? <clears throat> and then started on his way. He was going to go to Asia Minor. This is not Asia as in what we think of Asia today. Um, this is coming out of this out of uh, the up in here is Rome over here, and so we have Asia Minor. Is is all this down through this way here, and so we see Ephesus is right here. This is where Paul wanted to go. Paul wanted to go to Ephesus, and he wanted to work his way up through these towns. Now his first journey wrapped around somewhere along through here and came back. So as he makes his way through this area here, re-evangelizing, he wanted to work his way up through these, these cities, these inlands off the port. And so as he was doing that, the Holy Spirit decides to step in and had a, other things that, they wanted, or that he wanted him to do. Now look with me. It says this, it says in Galatia, they had been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. Verse 7 says, when they came to Mycenae, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So, they were here. They were trying to go into Asia. God says you cannot preach the gospel there. Now, why would God say that you cannot preach the gospel there? Because God knows best. God knows where you need to be, when you need to be there, and how you need to get there. And so one of the problems that we have as Christians is getting on our straight, nice, pretty line. We're just trying to work our way through this Christian experience. We're, trying, we're, in, our, we're, we're in our word. We're on our knees. We know what's best. And the Holy Spirit says, I need you to do this. Most Christians at that point put on the brakes and they put them on heavily. And they say, I was not expecting that. I didn't know that you were going to do that. I didn't sign up for all of that. I just want to sit in a pew. Nobody ever told me I was going to have to get on an airplane. Nobody ever told me that I needed a passport. I just want to be a Christian. I don't want to do all this. We like things to be a nice, pretty line. Focused on what we think we're supposed to be doing. Heading from here, Paul was used to going everywhere. Paul knew what it was like to be on the go. Heading from here, Paul's idea of what he thought needed to happen. Go to Asia Minor. Evangelize Ephesus. Go up through these towns. Every one of these places was a perfect place to plant a church. Every one of them. He says, right there's where we got to go. I can plant churches in every one of these towns. I can do so much good for the kingdom of God in these towns. But by the Spirit of Jesus, he says no. Paul, instead, heads through Asia, goes up to Mycenae. He says, now I'm going to go up here to Bithynia. This is another little port place, port city up here. I think we can do great things up there. I believe that we can do great things here in Bithynia. The Spirit of Jesus says, nope, I need you to go to Troas. He wasn't even headed that way. Paul wasn't even headed that way. Paul had everything figured out. I'm going back through my first journey. I'm going to head to Asia Minor, into Ephesus, work my way up to port cities, plant churches, do great things for the kingdom of God. And God says, that's not what I want you to do. He says, I don't even want you to preach in Asia. I don't even want you to open your mouth there. I don't want you to say a word there. The Bible says he goes around it. Gets to Mysia. 
my Sia, my, son, my phone. He gets to my Sia and he says, okay, great. I'm going to go up to Bithynia. I've heard great things about Bithynia. God says, no, you're going to go to Troas. He says, I don't want to go to Troas. I'm all the way over here. Why in the world would I want to go all the way back down to Troas? Why? It makes no sense. But that's not what Paul said. Paul followed the directions of the Holy Spirit. So we see here, it goes down into verse 8. It says, passing by Messiah, <clears throat> they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision in which a Macedonian man was standing and pleading with him, cross over to Macedonia and help us. After he had seen the vision, we immediately made efforts to set out from Macedonia, concluding that that's what God <clears throat> wanted us to do. So here, Paul started here, wanted to go here, went this way, didn't get to preach none there, none here, wanted to go here, God sent him here. Right? So he's now in Troas, and God says through a vision, I want you to go to Macedonia. I want you to go up here to Macedonia. That's Europe. The gospel had never been preached up there. He had never been there. So here we have Paul wanting to go on this nice, straight line. Paul knew what he wanted to do, and Paul listened to God. Paul was a godly man. It wasn't like he was lost. It wasn't like he was backslidden. Paul was on fire for Christ, like many of you are. But how do we react when the Holy Spirit says, take a left or take a right? How do you react to that? My other question to you is, are you close enough to God to hear him say, take a left or take a right? See, one of the things that we as Christians, I believe one of our biggest problems is we do not know the voice of God. We haven't talked to him enough. We haven't been on his knee enough. We haven't been at his feet enough. You know the old story I say all the time that the uh, kids are out playing in the yard. All the housetops are up through here. There's 10 kids playing. All of a sudden this woman's voice hollers down. Time for supper. All the kids are playing, but you only see one head pop up. Why? Because that little boy or girl knows their mama's voice. Just one little head pops up. Oh, got to go. That's mama. Do you know your father's voice? When the Holy Spirit says take a left or take a right, are you ready to adapt and overcome to the situation? Or you say, God, I wasn't expecting all that. That's not how I want to live my life. I've got my plans. I worship you. I read your word. I sit on committees at the church. I'm on fire for you. But are you ready to adapt and overcome when the Holy Spirit says, move? Maybe, <clears throat> maybe you're in Walmart. I love Walmart. You're walking through Walmart. You're buying food for the church picnic. Doing great things, right? Buying, buying food for the church picnic, for the Sunday school event, whatever the case. And you look over and just you feel the presence of God come across you when you see a person stand over a little, little man or little woman, whatever. And God just says, pray. Or God says, go over there and tell that person that you don't know what's going on, but God told me to come and tell you that he loves you. You say, God, you're crazy. I'm doing your work. I've got the hamburger buns and the hot dogs in the cart. I'm using my own money. 
to buy this stuff. God says, I don't care about none of that. He says, go and tell that little lady that I love her. Now, why would he tell this person to do that? Brings me to my second point. And, it, you know, I was thinking about this this morning. How many times do we overlook God's plans for our life because we're not willing to hear his voice? How many times do you walk right by what God wants you to do for someone else, for his kingdom, because we're not willing to hear his voice? And so I think about that little situation in Walmart. Why would God have me do that? Why would he have me go over to say something to someone, Mike? Why would he want me to walk up to a complete stranger? Don't he know? Don't he know that I'm doing what he wants me to do now? Don't he know that I'm in charge of the Sunday school breakfast? Don't he know that I'm in charge of the, of the ministry leadership breakfast? Point number two, the Holy Spirit knows the outcome. The Holy Spirit knows the outcome. Watch with me. Paul, and I'm going to quickly try to get through this. Paul goes through all of these places. He goes here. He's preaching the word. He can't preach here. He can't preach here. He wants to preach here. God says go here so you can preach here. He's all over the map. He's all over the place. Can you imagine what Paul, the, the, the one who brought the new covenant to us, this man of God, what he must be thinking... God, are you crazy? I could plant a church from here to there. I could plant 10 churches from here to there, but you're not even going to let me preach. Why? God says they're not ready, but they will be. Why can't this preacher come to this church? Why can't he come now? Because the church isn't ready. But when it is... It's going to be great. The preacher's not ready. But when he is, it's going to be great. God knows the outcome. Are you willing to trust the Holy Spirit of God in your life to guide, lead, and direct you? God knows the outcome. Follow with me. Verses 13, it says this, on the Sabbath day, we went outside the city gates, so here they're in Philippi, which is in the province of, of Macedonia. They went outside the city gates, and they were expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and spoke to a woman, or to the women gathered there. Verse 14 says this, a God-fearing woman named Lydia, a dealer of purple cloth from the city of Thyatira was listening. The Lord opened her heart to respond to what Paul was saying. After she and her household were baptized, she urged them to come and stay at her house. Paul was in the right place at the right time. Paul was in the right place at the right time. But if Paul <clears throat> would have stayed in Asia that was not ready for him yet, because if Asia was ready, God would have kept him there. Amen? Asia was not ready for him yet. But if Paul would have muddled around there because he did not want to listen to the Holy Spirit, if he would have said, you know what, God, I'm not going to listen. I'm just going to plant churches here because this is what I know, and I'm going to stay on this nice, pretty, straight line. He would have never made it to Macedonia to be at the end of the gate, outside the gate at that specific time to be praying with those women where Lydia was at. <clears throat> Preacher, what does that matter? Not only does Lydia get saved, but her whole household gets saved. You understand where I'm going with this? Not only does Lydia get saved, her whole household gets saved. Why? Because Paul was willing to adapt, obey, and overcome what the Holy Spirit was trying to do in his life. Listen, we can get caught up in sitting in these pews. We can get caught up in doing our own ministry. We can get caught up in the act of religion. 
We can get caught up in the act of church. But do you know your father's voice enough to know when he says take a left or take a right? If you've been on this path for 20 years and God's never told you to take a left or to take a right, if the Spirit's never guided you to take a left or take a right, then you need to get on your knees. You need to ask God, right, to ask God to let you be closer to Him. You need to get on your hands and knees. You need to say, God, I want to be closer to you because I can't hear your voice. If you've not heard God tell you to take a left or take a right in the past five years, you need to say, God, I want to be closer to you because believe me, God is trying to lead you in the direction that builds up the kingdom of God. How many people have you told about the gospel this week? How many people have you led to Christ this year? How many people have you simply enough invited to church, which sometimes is a cop-out? It's how we Christians cop out. Put it back on me, right? How many? If none, we know that God says if we will tell people about his word, his message, his son, he will add daily to the congregation of the kingdom those being saved. That's our jobs. If we think for one moment that God is not trying to do us the same way he did Paul on a daily basis, then we are sadly, sadly mistaken. God is trying to get you to go around this, go around that, to get to here. Because he knows what's waiting there is salvation. What's waiting there is someone getting saved. Their household getting saved. Their household getting saved baptized. What else do we know, preacher? Lydia becomes the first convert in Europe. She was the first known convert in Europe. Why? Because Paul listened to the Holy Spirit in his life. What else do we know, preacher? Her household was the first church in Europe. Lydia was the first convert. Her household made up the first church. What else do we know? Lydia was from Thyatira. We see that in the Word of God. She was from Thyatira, but she was in Philippi. More than likely, she was doing business there. If we look at Revelation 2.18, we find a church there called the Church of Thyatira. Paul never went to Thyatira. Bible does not completely put this on her, but most scholars believe that the church of Thyatira had something to do with Lydia going back to her home town and planting a church. God told Paul not to preach in Asia, not to preach in Bithynia, go to Trias and go to Macedonia. And there you'll find out what my purpose is. My gosh, I can only imagine that Paul was wondering, what in the world is God thinking? Congregation, maybe sometimes you're asking, what in the world is God thinking? What does God expect of me? He expects you to know his voice well enough to know when his Holy Spirit tells you to take a left or take a right. I don't know how long you've been a Christian. I don't even know if you are one this morning. If you've ever believed, the Bible says if you've ever truly believed in the gospel, then you're a Christian. If you come on Sunday nights, I'm dealing with 1 John, and I can explain all that to you. If you are a Christian here this morning, and you've never been in a relationship with God to the point where you can hear his voice, you're missing out. You're missing out. 
And that can all be fixed. That can all be taken care of right here or right there today. We need to ask God, God, let me get closer to you. Do you want to be a Christian that is able to adapt and overcome situations when the Holy Spirit lays them in your life? Or do you want to say, you know what, God, I appreciate it, but I think I'm just going to keep going this way. Because God will let you. He will. He'll let you be fruitless. He'll let you keep hammering the nail the same way every time with the same speed and the same power. He'll let you continue to do that. But whenever you want to get that nail driven in, whenever you want to get that box finished, he says, then let me know. Let me know. He said, because I've been trying to tell you all along to do it this way, but you just won't listen. Guys, I love you. I pray for you daily. My family prays daily for this church and this congregation. I've seen such miraculous things go on here over the past year. It has blessed my heart. But I'm telling you something. There's many of us in the church that aren't listening to what the Spirit's trying to tell you. You love the Lord, but you're just not willing to take a left or take a right. You like it nice, straight, and pretty. And sometimes the Holy Spirit says, it's not going to be so pretty where I'm going to send you, but you know what? It's going to bless the kingdom. Eyes closed and heads bowed, please.